Right now, and now let's come back to our studio discussion. We talk about the functions of rural China at the moment, but there are so many things about rural China when it comes to its development that needs to be resolved. First, financing. Mm -hmm. Who is providing them the money? Professor Wen, I understand Premier Wen yeah. talked a lot. One in of his, my family member. Exactly. <laughs> yes. In his working report of the government at mm -hmm. this year's NPC and CPPCC session, a lot of money and cash to be in rural China. Sure. Nowadays, not only in urban areas, but also in rural areas. We, we do have surplus financial capital. So China now became a kind of big financial capital surplus country. Mm -hmm. So, and then, how can we use this uh, money? It's a kind of investment. By whom? If by commercial bank? Okay. 240 small households, 240 million small households, and then they cannot just uh, a kind of good client of the commercial bank. So the, the problem is how this uh, commercial bank to use this surplus money to invest into the countryside. That is still the problem. Mm -hmm. Well, financing is a big problem because here in China, Mr. Harkness, I'm sure you know this very well, people do not own the land. Mm. That is uh, not the problem because that and uh, most of these uh, 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 so-called real estate owners, mm. they also don't have ownership mm -hmm. in the urban area. So but then what, what, when they borrow money from the bank, let's say, what can they use as a collateral? That is the problem. The it's the bank problem. It's mm. not the farmer's problem. I, is it not? Yeah, is bank refuse to take mm -hmm. the, the, the land as a kind of, store, uh, as a kind of mortgage. Yeah. And even that you have a very beautiful house, luxury, and then it's a maybe two level, maybe three level, like real estate, like a, a kind of re, a, a very, you know, if even that you in, in, in urban area you cannot have it, but you still cannot use your house to be a kind of mortgage. Mm -hmm. So you can't use your house to be the mortgage, to be the collateral. What can you use? Use the pigs and the cows? So what, how to solve the problem? Well, I, I mean, I think you're, I, I think you're right that, um, you know, there is a, and so is Professor Wen, I mean, there is a bias against, I think, rural people as compared to urban people, a feeling that if you're in, in the cities, you're going to have a higher income, so you would be a better risk for, uh, for a bank, even if you don't have collateral. Um, and I think uh, it is a problem that there isn't, um, uh, there, there aren't actual policies um, that promote more lending to individual farmers in, in the countryside. Mm -hmm. And if I uh, think about another developing countries like India or like maybe Bangladesh, maybe Indonesia, n most of these uh, developing countries, the, the people I mean, in, in countryside, even they have ownership of land. Can they do this, uh, uh, this uh, 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 bank uh, investment by the uh, user land? Mm -hmm. uh, also, also important. I also think I also impossible. think we can't pretend that credit is the only problem, and that if they could have access to credit, all the problems would be solved. You know, if you have access to credit, but you still only have uh, two or three mu of land, um, you still are faced with the problem of being a very small producer uh, against a very huge market. And mm. so I think that even if credit is available, there are still problems about economic organization, access to markets that would need to be solved. So that's a piece of it, but I think we shouldn't we shouldn't think that that's the only problem. Or mm. the, or the so what are one. the only problems? One of those I can pin on is, of course, uh, the kind of agriculture that we're having in China, mainly is household based, everybody has a small piece of land and using still some of the backward technologies to, uh, to farm at the moment. Well, you're smiling, so let's talk about some of the best stories. I understand, Professor Wen, one of your PhD students is working on a community supported farm. Yeah. And it's supposed to be one of those interesting ex experiments going on here in China about what might be what they call the new agriculture. Tell us about that. Okay, maybe that you ask a story from him because I send my students to him. <laughs> <laughs> I see you. Professor Wen has been directing my questions to you all the time, Mr. Harkness. Uh, Go ahead. It's, it's my job as his student. Um, uh, Shi Yan is her name. He had a student who uh, wanted to learn about 
alternative agriculture, as we call it, or, or community-supported agriculture in the United States. So she actually spent a whole farming season on a small farm in the, on the prairie in western Minnesota. She arrived in April. There was still snow on the ground. And when she left in October, the leaves were already turning colors. And she worked very, very hard. And uh, she really wanted to learn not only about farming, but also about these questions about the economic organization. Mm -hmm. So how can farmers actually make money on a small farm? And in this case, on a in farm the that's United organic. States. In the United States. Mm -hmm. So the interesting question is, is this a model that has anything to teach to China? Because the countries are very, very different. And right. maybe then I should turn it back over yes. to when okay. Mr. Professor Wen. So I mean, the story now turned to me that uh, when he come back, Originally, we do have set up these uh, uh, multifunction uh, cooperatives in the countryside. We are trying to set up a bridge between countryside and urban area for both side co-op. Mm -hmm. So we organize these citizens if they like to uh, consume uh, organic products. So they organize themselves as co-op. And then we help them to go in into the farm. Mm -hmm. So we set up a kind of pilot farm as a, in name of Dang Dang Farm. And then Shien from the United States come back, and then she is the vice manager of this farm. And then we have uh, these uh, uh, citizens to participate. And then when they work here, they do their observation. And then that is a kind of monitoring system. We don't pay for monit monitoring, but they work, they work here, and then they know what happened. Mm -hmm. So the whole of this uh, production under the monitor of the citizens, so they trust what is the products is organic and then easier to absorb these uh, citizens drawing and then some families they became uh, members mm -hmm. now we have uh, more than 200 members so it's like a membership based in yes. a way and mm -hmm. it's uh, made of those people who are caring about their um, the food qualities mm -hmm. in a way but maybe they only belong to a certain percentage of the sure. population who can afford to care that is about the, the food class. quality yes. at the moment. Right. So is, it, is that going to be the model, or is it going to be one of those cute little experiments that we're having right now? I think that if you go to Europe, these uh, uh, ordinary EU countries 15. So these are 15 old EU countries. They have so many phenomena like that. But what about in China? We're talking In China is a similar, because nowadays we have um, more than 20% of population can claim them as a kind of middle class. So the middle class in EU also the very uh, big force to push the uh, organic production in a countryside going forward. Mm. You see, so Professor Wen is very enthusiastic about this project. <laughs> but so let me have you a little mm -hmm. bit cool-headed in a way as to whether this can be a model or is it going to be one of those solutions for rural China or are we just providing a bourgeoisie leisure lifestyle for the city dwellers? Misunderstanding. Uh, <laughs> uh, misunderstanding. Okay. No, Let's I, go to Mr. Harkness. To say no, that. I mean, I, I think that um, there is a danger that people will misunderstand this kind of model and not make the connections um, that I think people are making on, on this farm and just think this is just a way to support a bourgeois lifestyle. Um, but at the same time, uh, I think that what, what we see when we visit the farm is a reconnection with, uh, with rural areas and a, and a new understanding about the importance of, of agriculture in rural areas among urban people that is going to be very important in the future. Mm -hmm. And this is not a model that can help all or even most of Chinese farmers because you need to be near enough to a population center, you know, there's uh, work involved in marketing. So even, you know, in the United States or Europe, it's not solving all of agriculture's problems, but it is one way to finance a particular kind of farming. And in many cases, of course, in China, it's very hard for small farms to become organic.